My friends, in this lecture, we want to examine the reported messages of uh, Garabandal. Uh, Garabandal, a series of reported apparitions from 1961 to, through 1965 in a mountain town in Spain. As always, first ecclesiastical status. Uh, interesting history with the Garabandal apparitions. The first bishop was against, uh, the second bishop uh, was in favor, and uh, a third bishop said he follows his predecessors, which left some people to, to not be clear exactly what that meant, since the predecessors had very strongly different and diverse opinions on Garabandal's authenticity. And at present, Garabandal would be in the category of non constate supernaturalitate, once again, that middle category. It is not condemned, it has never been uh, formally condemned, uh, and it is not approved. The first bishop uh, had a negative report, but the bishop that followed him had a very positive response to Garabandal. And at present, uh, a recent apostolic administrator of the city, the small town of Garabandal, uh, offered mass at Garabandal, and certainly pilgrimages, uh, private pilgrimages are welcome to Garabandal. Now, as I mentioned previously, one of the strongest advocates for the authenticity of Garabandal was St. Padre Pio. Padre Pio uh, is not the magisterium, and he's not the local bishop. Uh, but in terms of beyond that, uh, certainly his spiritual discernment would be very significant uh, as the 20th century's phenomenal stigmatist and miracle worker. Now, with that as a background, uh, I want to briefly go through the message of Garabandal uh, and also three elements that are particular, though not unique, to Garabandal. Number one, the warning. Number two, the miracle. Number three, the sign. First of all, the apparitions, as I mentioned, happen, uh, begin on June 18, 1961, to four young girls. Uh, three are 12. Uh, the fourth is 11. Uh, the principal seer would be known as Conchita. These, the very first uh, apparition is actually from St. Michael, the archangel, preparing the way for Our Lady, very similar to Fatima with the angelic apparitions of 1916 and 19, beginning of 1917, preparing the way for the six major apparitions of Our Lady at Fatima. St. Michael said to the children, quote, Do you know why I have come? It is to announce to you that tomorrow, Sunday, the Virgin Mary will appear to you as Our Lady of Mount Carmel. And she does, in fact, appear as Our Lady of Mount Carmel uh, at the apparitions in Garabandal. Now, the fundamental message of Garabandal is a call for prayer and penance, especially Eucharistic adoration and Eucharistic reparation, uh, particular emphasis on priests, on the importance of uh, priests, on prayers for priests, and also in reparation for uh, the challenges of priesthood. Now, it's also telling that St. Michael the Archangel uh, will appear in 1964 after Our Lady appears in 1961 with a message of saying that the cup of God's justice is filling up. That's Our Lady's message and calling people to respond. Prayer and penance and the rosary and Eucharistic adoration and Eucharistic reparation. In 1964, St. Michael will come and say, now the cup is not only filling up, but, but overflowing with the justice of God, because indeed, humanity is not responding to the message. Uh, there was a miracle on uh, July 18th of 1962 that had been prophesied on May 2nd of 1962. And the miracle was that uh, Conchita was promised by Our Lady that she would have a Eucharistic miracle, that is, that the host would appear on her tongue as a sign of authenticity. And uh, on, again, July 18, 1962, at midnight, uh, in front of uh, a battery of cameras, uh, Conchita uh, put her tongue out, and the Eucharistic host miraculously appeared on her tongue. And again, uh, there's endless documentation for this. Uh, there's a, uh, several filmings of this uh, as, again, a prophesied miracle which took place. Now let's get to uh, the heart 
of the messages. And I, I do want to say that very much like the Akita message, the Garibandal message uh, in one of its messages talks about cardinal versus cardinal, bishop versus bishop. That is a great internal challenge for the church. It was in fact that one message that encouraged the first bishop to come out with a negative opinion, although it was uh, a negative opinion uh, based on a commission that was only given three days of possible work. And in fact, many people who had experienced miracles and experienced healings were not allowed to speak to the commission uh, as per the bishop's instructions. So the first negative decision does not seem to have done the proper process of church evaluation. And that's why the second bishop reopened the case for Garibandal uh, and was very favorable uh, and spoke worldwide about the authenticity of Garibandal. Although he did not, before the end of his uh, overseeing as bishop, he did not make a formal positive statement because there was still one report of a commission that had not yet been completed. So, according to the first bishop, the reference of cardinal versus cardinal, bishop versus bishop, would not be something Our Lady said. Now, we saw the identical message and content in the church-approved apparitions of Our Lady of Akita, that indeed there would be a time where cardinal would be opposing cardinal, bishop would be opposing bishop, in what appears to be some reference to some type of internal uh, challenge for the church. So certainly something not against faith and morals, uh, and in fact could be a warning to pray more for church unity, to pray more for obedience to our Holy Father. The three principal messages, uh, or at least I should say the pillar messages, number one, the warning. Now, the warning uh, in the Spanish, the, the aviso, uh, sometimes uh, called the illumination, uh, is described by Conchita and the other visionaries as a God-given illumination of conscience for every single individual at the same time. So, God's kind of examination of our consciences for the sake of truth and for the sake of conversion. The warning uh, in the words of the visionaries, uh, this is from Conchita, this warning, like the chastisement, is a very fearful thing for the good. It will draw the good closer to God. It will warn the wicked that the end of time, not to be confused with the end of the world, is coming. She goes on to say, the warning will be like a revelation of our sins, and it will be seen and experienced equally by believers and non-believers and people of any religion, whatever. Every person on earth will have an interior experience of how they stand in the light of God's justice. It is like a purification for the miracle, of which we will speak momentarily. And it is like, uh, it, excuse me, it will give us a chance to ponder our interior lives, Jesus will send the warning to purify us so that we can better appreciate the miracle by which he clearly proves his love for us and hence his desire that we seek the consequence, that we see the consequences of sin we have committed. Now, Conchita, as well as the other visionaries, will say that the warning will first be some external event in the sky, some type of celestial event uh, as described a worldwide warning will happen in the sky like a, the collision of two stars that do not fall down. So there'll be something external and immediately after that would be the internal illumination that God would provide each and every individual. Which I would say parenthetically again must be seen as a great grace that it is. If we're truly concerned about salvation and sanctification, we want the truth. We should desire the truth of where our souls are and, and hence the primary intention for this warning. Parenthetically, uh, this warning has been something that several saints and mystics have experienced within the last two or three centuries on an individual basis. Uh, Blessed Anna Maria Taigi, the great uh, Italian uh, homemaking mystic, if you will, cardinals would line up in her home to wait until she finished her domestic chores uh, to have their counsel, sometimes the reading of their souls, but uh, certainly uh, uh, an acknowledged uh, mystic. She experienced the illumination of conscience, as did uh, St. Faustina of the Divine Mercy. And several other saints have been given this as a grace for conversion. 
the Garibandal message speaks about this happening uh, on a global basis and happening at once. One of the other visionaries, Yashinta, not to be confused with the Fatima Yashinta, states, quote, the warning is something that is first seen in the air everywhere in the world and immediately is transmitted into the interior of our souls. It will last for a very little time, but it will seem a very long time because of its effects within us. It will be for the good of our souls in order to see ourselves, our conscience, the good that we have failed to do and the bad that we have done. Then we will feel a great love towards our heavenly parents and ask forgiveness for all of our offenses. The warning is for us to draw closer to Him and to increase our faith. Therefore, one should prepare for that day, but not await it with fear. God does not send things for the sake of fear, but rather with justice and love. He does it for the good of his children, so they might enjoy eternal happiness and not be lost. So, first of all, the warning. Secondly, you have the miracle. And according to the message of Garibandal, within 12 months after the warning, there will be a miracle, a healing, uh, a, a tremendous outpouring of grace, at the location of the apparitions in Garabandal, Spain, uh, in what's called a series of pines. Uh, it's a high mountain country, and on top of one of the mountains, uh, going up one of the hills, is a encircling of pines, which are simply called the pines there. And at this place, uh, 12 months after the warning, there would be the healing, the miraculous healing of all who come in faith. Uh, there are also some indications of when the miracle would happen. Now, some, again, might be quick to object. This sounds uh, too cloak and dagger. It, it's too mysterious. Why would Our Lady give indications of something? Why doesn't she just say, this is the day it's going to be? It, it makes me uncomfortable. Well, I, I, would, I would remind you, uh, for those who might have uh, an objection of that nature, that Our Lady is always respectful of free will, and she's also gracing people who are open based on prudent examination. I would have to say the Garibandal apparitions, certainly in terms of message content, there's nothing contrary to the church in faith and morals, uh, as well uh, as the phenomena. The ph phenomena at, at the Garibandal uh, is extraordinary. In many cases, the visionaries walking uh, while looking up over very rocky mountain area, uh, very similar to what took place at Medjugorje, uh, in the early days of the apparitions uh, as an indication that this is truly of God. So the message, the phenomena, and the fruits have, have been very high and very positive from the Garibandal message. Obviously, the first negative opinion of the first bishop led some to question, and then the second bishop, in reopening the case and being very positive, has encouraged many to return to accepting Garibandal on this middle category, before the church makes her final and definitive judgment. So what are some of these indications of when the miracle is going to happen? It will be on, according to the messages, on a Thursday at 8.30 on the feast of a martyred saint for the Eucharist. Not a feast day of Our Lady or of Our Lord, according to the, to the children. It will happen in the months of March, April, or May. It will be seen by all those on looking in the areas of the pine, uh, and indeed all who are present would receive miraculous healing, especially of, of physical natures. Conchita uh, will announce, Conchita knows the date of the miracle and will announce the date eight days before it takes place to be spread according to uh, the proper pastoral guidelines. Uh, Conchita uh, continues to live. She is uh, in the area of New Jersey in the United States at present time. Now, the third element, and then I'll discuss the second and third together, the third element is the permanent sign. On the day of the miracle, so a Thursday, 8.30 in the months of, in, in, within the months of March, April, and May, uh, you will have this healing of everybody uh, who is there, both spiritual and uh, as well physical, for all those within the, the region of the Pines. There will also be granted, according to the message, a permanent sign, again, as a testimony to Our Lady's love and presence at Garibandal. We saw this and heard this at Medjugorje. 
The possibility also of Akita, of a sign uh, being given, although less clarity on Akita, whether it's the a permanent sign like Medjugorje and Garavadal or something uh, more atoned to the Eucharist, uh, different interpretations. Let me read to you this quote from uh, Conchita regarding the miracle and sign. She says, quote, The Blessed Virgin advised me of a great miracle, saying that God our Lord would perf perform it through her intercession, just as the chastisement will be very, very great in keeping with the needs of the world. The Blessed Virgin has told me the date of the miracle and what it will consist of. I am supposed to announce it eight days in advance so people will come. The Pope will see it from wherever he is. The sick who are present at the miracle will be cured and sinners will be converted. It will coincide with an event in the church and with the feast of a saint who is a martyr of the Eucharist. And it will take place on 8.30 on a Thursday evening. It will be visible not only to those who are in the village, but also to those in the surrounding mountains. It will be the greatest miracle Jesus has performed. There won't be the slightest doubt that it comes from God and that it is for the good of mankind. There will be no doubt in the mind of anyone who sees this great miracle which God, our Lord, will perform through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin. Now we await this great day of the miracle. And let us see if the world changes and the chastisement is averted. So, the sign is a permanent element as described by the children, something that can be uh, seen, it cannot be touched, but will be a permanent indication of Our Lady's love and of the authenticity of the Garabandal apparitions. Let me say as well, uh, the fourth component, uh, which is not one of the pillars, but certainly, uh, certainly could merit uh, being a fourth pillar, and that is the strong though conditional message of chastisement. As we saw in every authentic message, there is the warning of an extraordinary and uh, in some cases unprecedented, if we understand the, the Akita reference of greater than the flood, chastisement if the world does not convert. So, and the warning and miracle are all means to assist in conversion and with the hope of mitigating uh, the chastisement or the possibility of eliminating, although uh, based on the message of Garabandal, where, where uh, St. Michael says the cup of justice is flowing over, uh, it looks like there uh, perhaps is a little possibility of a total aversion, but there's always the possibility of mitigation. So the message of Garabandal, the warning, an in, uh, a worldwide spontaneous illumination of conscience to help conversion, the miracle, Within 12 months after the warning uh, announced by the visionary, eight days before the event, uh, those present at the Pines at Garabandal would receive a physical healing or even a spiritual healing and the conversion of, of great sinners. And thirdly, the sign, a permanent sign uh, to help unbelievers, all which, uh, of which is ordained towards averting or mitigating a great chastisement. Now, Along with the message of Garabandal, I also want to speak about uh, the message of the Rosa Mystica. Now, the Rosa Mystica, uh, a series of apparitions which started in 1947 and ended up in 1966. Uh, again, ecclesiastical status, and, and there's a certain first cousin nature to this with Garabandal messages, uh, not only the, the, the close in terms of time, but in terms of initial church response. The messages of and the apparitions of Rosa Mystica received a negative statement from a first bishop. Uh, certainly uh, within the 1980s, there was a negative statement regarding the authenticity of Rosa Mystica. The next bishop, Bishop Sanguinetti, allowed, uh, and, and, and by this showing a new position, allowed a pilgrimage of 100 priests uh, and other private pilgrimages to Rosa Mystica, and in 2014, there was the approval, the official approval by the present bishop of devotion to the Rosa Mystica, without, per se, a, an approval of the messages, which incidentally, from a theological perspective, is always a little challenging in that the scriptural criteria and the classic church criteria is always, you know, you will know a tree by its fruits. So it's always a little particular and unusual 
to approve fruits without referring to the tree from which the fruits come. That would be the message and the apparitions. Nonetheless, the devotion to the Rosa Mystica uh, stemming from Monte Chiari, this is in northern Italy, uh, has received official approval by the local bishop in 2014. Let's go to the heart of the Rosa Mystica message. The visionary, uh, Pierina Ghigli, uh, a woman who desired to be a nun but for reasons of sickness, had to leave, had, had difficulty joining the convent, and she's later given permission, but she's in and out because of significant physical illness and sickness. She receives a series of messages in 1947 which focus very much on vocations. Our Lady says that she's coming to bring a new devotion for an increase uh, in vocations and, as we will see, in reparation for priesthood not lived according to the proper vocation of priesthood. And so it's a very clearly focused message on vocations. Now the image of the Rosa Mystica is the image of a white rose on, on Our Lady's, Our Lady's uh, white or off-white, but on her chest are three roses. There is the uh, white rose, which is the call for prayer. There is the red rose, which is a call for sacrifice. And then there is the yellow rose, which is a call for total immolation, self-immolation in reparation for priests who betrayed their vocations. Uh, the, the, the expression which is strong Our Lady literally uses is Judas priests. Now, it's interesting that the visionary Pierina, when Our Lady gave this message, was aghast and shocked, and her comment was, what priest anywhere in the world is not loving his vocation? Uh, but perhaps uh, her own uh, piety and, and, and devotion to priesthood uh, should not curtail the reality of the challenges the church have had more recently in terms of the, the, the sad and tragic event of uh, priest scandals. And of course, we're always quick to affirm the, the, the vastly higher number of priests who have been true to their vocation, and yet a historic priestly scandal uh, in our time. So you could see the prophetic nature of the message of the Rosa Mystica in calling people to pray and to make reparation uh, for priesthood and religious life. She also promises that religious orders that will honor her under the Rosa Mystica title with the Rosa Mystica statue, the image, would receive many vocations. Now, I want to go, just go into a few of these messages. Uh, uh, in particular, I'm going to highlight that, again, on July 13, 1947, she uh, is given, uh, Pierina is given this message about a new devotion of the Rosa Mystica that is supposed to come to religious orders. And she's giving this precisely uh, to increase and sustain priesthood and religious life. July 13, 1947 is, uh, if you will, the feast day of uh, the Rosa Mystica, uh, and which he asked that uh, would be recorded and continued in history. Now, December 8th, 1947 is arguably the single most important apparition in the Rosa Mystica, although good minds could differ on that. It is when she reveals what she calls the Hour of Grace. And Our Lady has requested that on December 8th, every December 8th from 12 o'clock to 1 o'clock, that people would spend one hour in prayer uh, and that extraordinary graces would be given to those who responded to this call. I want to read that message to you now. Again, uh, December 8th, 1947, Our Lady says, quote, I am the Immaculate Conception. I am Mary, Mother of Grace, Mother of the Divine Son, Jesus Christ. Here in Montecchiari, I wish to be called Rosa Mystica. I wish that every year on December 8th there will be an hour of universal grace at midday. With this practice, one will obtain many spiritual and corporeal graces. Our Lord, my divine Son, will grant His greatest mercy as long as the good people continue to pray for their sinful brothers. 
Please report as soon as possible to the Supreme Father of the Catholic Church, Pope Pius XII, that my wish is for this, this hour of grace to be known and extended to the whole world. Those who cannot be in their church, even remaining in their homes at midday praying, will obtain graces from me. Now, she also asks that during this hour of grace, that the faithful would extend their arms while praying Psalm 51 three times as an act of reparation. So once again, while extending their arms, uh, praying Psalm 51 three times as an act of reparation and as a means by which to prepare for the great graces of this devotion. The Rosa Mystica message also has a strong message regarding Our Lady's role uh, as the co-redemptrix, her co-redemption. It is also seen as a continuation of the Fatima message, but uh, above all, it is a call for renewal of priesthood and religious life and an increase in vocations. Also significant in the message is the call uh, to refer to Our Lady as Mother of the Church. Now, historically uh, significant, I think, the region of Monte Chiari in northern Italy is the same region from which Pope Paul VI came. And at one point, Our Lady asked the people to send a, a much uh, significant portion of wheat from the area to Pope Paul VI to be able to make unconsecrated hosts and also to convey uh, this title, Mother of the Church. Now, it is significant, I think, uh, without direct causal evidence, that at the Second Vatican Council, Paul VI declared Mary as Mother of the Church. Uh, and there was some theological opposition to this, saying, no, she's only the daughter of the Church and disciple, whatnot. Uh, and Paul VI stood firm and clearly in support of tradition in declaring that Mary was Mother of the Church. Well, this certainly circulated in the Rosa Mystica uh, messages uh, a good number of years before uh, the proclamation was made. So, the message of Rosa Mystica, and again, uh, because there is a, a full approval of the devotion, people can certainly go on pilgrimage to Rosa Mystica. It's a beautiful pilgrimage spot. And again, at a time of a shortage of priesthood uh, and religious life, uh, what a beautiful way to do our part to specifically pray for more priests and religious, for more vocations, as well as to do our responsibility to make reparation for the betrayal of the, the failure of priesthood and religious life as asked for in the message. Thank you.